Welcome back to my kitchen, everybody. I'm Dr. Hafizula. Today we are traveling to beautiful Bahamian islands, right? We are making conch fritters, a conch salad, and pairing that with a limeade. It's one of my family's favorite dishes. So the queen conch itself actually is really important to Bahamian culture. It has been used for centuries for food, decoration, jewelry, bait for fishing, and even as a musical instrument, the conch horn itself, right? Now its meat is a well-loved delicacy, enjoyed in a variety of ways, including as fritters, salad, grilled, stewed, or even cracked and fried in a batter. Conch is a very important part of the shallow water ecosystems of the Bahamas. The livelihoods of fishermen, vendors, restaurant owners, seafood wholesalers, and other processors depend on healthy conch populations. Conch is one of the island nation's staples, as well as a cultural icon. There is actually an annual conch parade or festival using contests that feature who can eat the most conch, cook the best conch dishes, and crack and clean conch shells the fastest. So are you excited? I am excited to taste these dishes. Come on, let's cook together. Welcome back. You are in the kitchen with me. I'm Dr. Hafizula, and we are going to the Bahamas today. Look at this spread. Now, conch fritters, that's all I need to say sometimes in my family, and everybody's on board. This is one of my husband's favorite dishes, okay? Uh, we're also going to be doing a conch salad and pairing it with a delicious, very simply made limeade. Are we ready everybody? Look at the spread. So I have glass bowls. I'm gonna be using glass bowls for both mixtures. You wanna make sure you have like non-reactive bowls because we're using a lot of acid, a lot of ingredients that could leach into whatever you're using, right? So I'm gonna start off with making the fritter batter first. And we're not going to deep fry it. We're going to bake it. So I've already been preheating my oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. It's ready for us. So all we just need to do is literally make the fritter mixture, let it sit for a minute and then come back and scoop it in, bake it and we're good to go. Okay. So to start off the fritter mix, of course, conch. That's the star of this dish, right? So we have some tender conch that's been chopped up over here. I'm going to add that into my mixture here first. It's already sort of in its conch juices. And notice I have a little, nice little slotted spoon here that helps me to drain some of that conch. You can put as much or as little as you'd like right in here. And then I just add one more spoon right into here because I want to make sure that we have conch in every bite, right? To this, you're going to be adding some other ingredients like finely chopped green bell peppers. Notice how finely I chopped those. You can use a nice little spatula here to get all of that goodness out of your container. Just like that. I'm gonna add in all the colors, right? We're gonna do red, green, yellow, orange, whatever we have available. Go ahead and add red bell peppers in. Here we have yellow bell peppers, also finely diced. Because remember, this is gonna be a fritter, it's gonna be a fritter mixture. You don't wanna to have too many chunky things in there. Now I did have some roasted red peppers in the fridge. So I wanna just put in a couple of those pieces in there. It adds in a smokiness that is so delicious and earthy. And people just don't know what that background taste is. That's a little bit of a little secret, right? Here I have some very finely chopped white onion. That's also gonna go in. And I'm actually gonna add in some garlic powder, onion powder mix, just like that. And add in a little bit of the dried thyme mix. Now, if you have actual, the thyme leaves themselves on the stems, just pull off the leaves. You don't wanna get those woody stalks in there. Just add that right in. Oh, it smells so good right now. Now, you could at this point add in a little bit of tomato paste. It adds a little bit of a kick to it just a touch of the tomato paste in here. 
Now you can spice this up however you'd like. I'm just choosing to use a little bit of this in here. I'm going to add a little bit of my favorite hot sauce, as you know, my Trini hot sauce. It could be any scotch bonnet peppers, it could be habanero peppers, it could be your own personal hot sauce, whatever you choose to make and add it into your spicy level, whatever level you like, right? I'm going to reserve that for my sauce for a little bit later. Okay. And, or you could just chop up some scotch bonnet peppers with or without the seeds. If you include the seeds in there, it's going to be a little spicier. I'm going to mix this up together. Look at that. Making sure that the tomato paste blends well. I like to use a nice, you know, silicone type of spatula like this one. So it allows me to just scrape the sides of the bowl like this. See how nicely that's blended? And look at the beautiful colors, the colors of the Bahamas right here, right? Oh, what's nice is this conch is already nice and tender. If you were to have fresh conch, you have to tenderize that for a period of time, right? This you can also use with any other proteins. So if you have shrimp available, if you have crab, if you have octopus, you can use that too. I'm gonna add a beaten egg. Cracked an egg earlier in here. And we're just literally gonna add it in. Just like that, straight into this. Get all of those delicious whites and yolks together in there. And mix that in just a little bit. You can add a drizzle of olive oil to this now, and that sort of helps the inside of it to cook a little bit more. So I'm just gonna add in a little bit of my spice infused olive oil to it, just a touch. Add in some salt and some pepper. Now remember, sometimes if you got canned conch, that comes sometimes in salted water. So just add just enough salt that you need. Remember, you also have a dip that you're gonna be using. That can also have some spice in there too, so you don't really need to have too much salt in there. Give that a nice mix, right like that. And I'm gonna actually add in, add in some leavening agents that will allow this to puff up and rise a little bit. Now I have double acting baking powder. Just gonna go right in, just like this. And to that, we're going to add our flour mixture. Okay, now for the flour, instead of using purely all-purpose flour, I'm mixing it up a little bit, adding a little extra protein and a little extra fiber with some almond flour. We're gonna add some almond flour in first. I'm gonna see if I can add this so that it, with a nice little sifter to get all the lumps out, just like that. See that? Just add it in. It's gonna absorb a lot of that liquid. So you can add that in, shake it around a little bit, give it a shake, give it a shake. Make sure that you can get all of those lumps out of there. I wanna make sure I have a nice airy batter, right? Keep this going and shake it around a little bit. I love this little device because it allows me to break up the lumps on the inside and it adds a featheriness to this fritter so it's not too dense and too hard. If you have extra in there, like the lumps that you don't want, just pop it straight back into the same dish, just like here. I'm gonna add it right back here. And a little bit later, we can use some of that as well, just like so. Now, I'm gonna add in all-purpose flour, okay? Before I mix this a little bit, I'm gonna just add just enough here to give ourselves sort of a liquidy batter that is not too thick. Always have some water nearby so you can add additional liquid if you need to. I'm gonna try this first and I'm gonna mix it at the same time. Give it a little bit of a stir, just like that. Oh, that's coming together nicely. Now, instead of water, something else that I do to add to this mix to ensure that I get enough bubbly action in there, I sometimes add sparkling water, right? So I know that some folks might add beer and some other carbonated drinks. You don't even need that alcohol, just plain sparkling water. And it's going to add a bubbliness to this dish. Okay, let us put this down a second, just over here, and add in some of that sparkling water right here. Just enough. Like you see that, it's adding all the bubble action that we want right into this mix. Oh, that is a little secret to making this fluffy 
and allowing it to sort of come together nicely. I need a little bit more water in there. This is the color that I'm looking for. I mean, you can actually use a lime flavor sparkling water if you want that too. But I love this because it's giving me just enough lift in there. Remember we have the baking powder. You can add a touch of baking soda. There is no reason not to sometimes if you want a little extra fluffiness to it. Because remember, we're not gonna fry these. We're going to bake these, right? So I'm gonna put this down a second. Add just a little bit more flour to it. See here, because I want it to sort of have its own sort of glueiness to it, right? So it feels like it's coming together. We can add a little bit more flour to it, just like this. Always have it nearby. Add it in, give it a stir, just like this, sort of fold that flour in, just like this. See that? Until it gets to the thickness that you'd like. It's almost there. There we go. Scrape the edges down a little bit. Oh, if you could smell this mixture. We haven't even put it in the oven yet, and it smells so delicious. There we go, that's what I wanna see. Now, if you want more of the roasted red pepper, you can do that too. I don't feel like I need it. If you want an additional egg in there, if you want a little extra egginess, you can do that too. But let us think that we're gonna let it sit for a second. At this consistency, it looks perfect. Just like so. And this will give it a chance for the baking powder to take action. And I think that that looks just, just where I want it to be, okay? Jack Hi. was feeling kinda, Ugh. so he stopped by the CVS Health Hub. Welcome. Where our provider ran some tests and realized that he needed help huh. to manage his diabetes. Whoa. So we recommended a doctor, Thanks. worked with his insurance, and got him on medication. And our care concierge Me again. helped him find the right gear. Bye. Experience healthier made easier at a CVS Health Hub near you. And the next part of this is so easy. We're making a conch salad. So this is like the Bahamian version of a ceviche, right? With conch as a star. So same conch mixture that I had before. And we're, the, what's gonna cook this is the acid that we're gonna be using, right? So the remaining conch, chopped finely, right in the bottom of my bowl. Let's take as much of that out as we can, just like that. I'm gonna see if we can drain these all out. I love the extra surface area of this slotted spoon. It allows me to catch all of those little pieces that try to get away from me, right? Just like that. This literally smells like the ocean. Oh, makes me want to go to the beach right now. Maybe we could do the next cooking show at the beach. I know you join me there, right? Let's pray for some good weather. <laughs> and we will have some fun at the beach and make this ocean side. Reminds me of growing up in Trinidad. We got together with our family. We would have all of these campouts and cookouts, make our own fire by the beach side and literally just enjoy life the beach, the spices, the food, the camaraderie, that's what life's about, right? I think I have taken as many pieces of this conch out as I possibly could. So I'm putting that into the bottom of my dish and you're literally bringing together some delicious ingredients, right? We have tomatoes, which will add an additional acidity to the conch itself, the conch salad itself. So just get that in there. We're gonna add in some cucumbers. Now I've taken the seeds out of my cucumbers and peel them. The seeds tend to have this spring some more water, right? So if you just take the seeds out, it's a really good way to keep this dish sort of vibrant and not too watered down. Here are some finely chopped green onions. Look how beautiful that is. Again, look at the colors. Ah, makes you excited to eat, right? I have some finely chopped white onion just right in here. Gonna add that in. Have some more red bell peppers also added in. Okay, I want a little bit more color to this here. We have reds, greens, and whites going on, but let's add a little orange to this, right? Actually, right before you join me, I started chopping up some delicious orange bell peppers. Let me pop this to the side over here. And let's finish chopping those up. I'm gonna add those to the party, okay? So here, some of our I've already chopped up. 
So we're going to add in a couple of strips over here of just these beauties that have been sitting out. You can cut these into strips and literally just sort of bring them together in a fine chalk, just like this. And you're gonna add this straight in to the rest of the mix. All of, the, all of these peppers are going to just absorb all of the acid that's in there and the flavor of the conch. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. I'm gonna add this in to our orange pepper mix, just like that. Bring our bowl back. We don't need these guys anymore. Let's pop these away. Just like so. Bring our beautiful, colorful bowl back. And just throw it right in. It's joining the party. <laughs> and so now we're going to add in a couple of different amazing spices. Now I have my favorite Trinity hot sauce. Any hot sauce that you'd like, any peppers that you have, just go ahead and add it in. I'm adding enough of that in there. This is nuclear, let me tell you. You just need a little bit of it. You don't need too much of it. And here is what's going to really cook the conch. The lime juice or lemon juice and a little bit of orange juice. I'm just gonna pour that straight in, just like that. And a little bit of the orange juice, just like so. Freshly squeezed better, right? And to that, I love to add a little bit of lime zest into my salad. So I just take my zester and then just sort of scrape the outside of my lime. That just adds another layer of flavor. So good. Just like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. You could squeeze an extra lime if you'd like. Why not? Just for good measure. For me as well. We just went ahead and zested that lime. Why not give it a little squeeze right over the top? Add a little bit of acid heaven here, <laughs> right? We're gonna pop this right in here. Just squeeze it around just a little bit. Let's get a little extra fresh squeeze lime juice in there. This one over here. Squeeze this one right here, just like so. Remember, we've gotta add a little bit of salt and black pepper to this too, so let's do that. I have my salt right here. Just add some salt. We're going to taste it in a minute for seasoning. And a little bit of cracked black pepper as well. Straight to the top. Just like so. Okay. I'm gonna mix this up a little bit. Look at that. The acid that's in there. Oh, that is what's going to kind of um, denature the protein or break apart the proteins in the conch. That smells amazing guys oh well while this is sitting out for a minute we're actually going to pop this in the fridge in just a little moment so we're going to come right back i'm going to pop this in the fridge let this cool down i'll give it about 10 to 15 minutes or so then it's really ready and when you come back we will go ahead and put our batter from our comforter into the little pan special thanks to our sponsors edna cvs health American Heritage School. Welcome back everybody. I just popped our beautiful conch salad in the fridge. Our batter looks ready now to put into the little, I have these little bubble pans right here that keep the shape of the conch fritters. Hey, listen, I know some people want to hold on to their shape, right? They don't want the flat version. They want the rounded versions. So let's give it a try and see how it works. The first thing we want to do is spray the bottom of our bubble pan. I have avocado oil or olive oil, whatever you have available, just go ahead and use it and spray the top as well, just like that. And what you wanna do is make sure that that oil is sort of everywhere. So use a little brush, a little silicone brush, brush each of those wells, just like that. This is a non-stick pan, which is great, but a little oil helps to crisp up the outside of the fritters and gives it the flavor and the crunch that we want. So let's just do that all the way, the tops and the bottoms, just like that. Just put your little brush straight in there. And I'm gonna use an ice cream scoop, everybody. That gives me the perfect portions in each of these wells. So start off just like that. And you're gonna fill each well with some of your mixture, just like that think that we can probably even do two batches of this. Looks like we have a lot of mixture. So we're gonna get a lot of conch in each one of these, right? So this is a bottom portion. If you could see the color here, oh, 
And while this is in the oven baking up, we're going to talk about the dip that we're going to use for this, okay? We're going to make our own dip. A lot of times people are using mayonnaise and ketchup, but we're going to do something a little different and I can't wait to tell you about it. Let's just finish these out here. Got a nice chunk of conch in that one. We're making just enough for a nice family together, right? A little fet <laughs> that we're gonna have together. And if you have extra mixture, you can freeze it. We'll keep it in the fridge for a couple of days, but just definitely right away freeze it. Cause remember there's egg in here, got the conch in here. We wanna make sure that it stays fresh and well but you can definitely make this ahead of time and store it and use it for many different occasions. So here's another piece of conch in here. Ah, oh, those big chunky pieces of conch, I love it. So it looks like I do have some leftover mixture. I'm going to save that. That's gonna be working for another time. Make sure each of my wells just has enough mixture in there. You can top off a few, just like that. Okay, next step to so just put the lid on, pop it in the oven, and we're probably gonna bake this mm, about 10 to 15 minutes. I'll check on it in just a little bit and see exactly. With a nice skewer, we're gonna pierce it from the top and check it. So here we go, we're gonna pop this in the oven. Middle rack, just like that. I'm gonna put a kitchen timer on for about 10 minutes. And that's gonna give me a cue to come right back to this and check it, right? So now we're gonna be making our dip. We've got a couple of different choices. Earlier, when I made Trini Pallori, I made some mango chutney. You could use this as well, or we're gonna actually mirror something similar to what would, you know, we would typically use with a conch fritter, which is that mayonnaise and ketchup. But what I have here is Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt as a base is incredible. Full of protein, great for your gut health, it's an amazing substitute for any of the mayonnaise, right? To that, I'm gonna add in a couple of different things. I'm going to add, of course, my Trini hot sauce straight into it, just like that. Just a nice little dollop. If you want a little bit of a reddish color, you can add a little bit of a natto powder to it, right? That gives you another little flare of color. And I do have a little bit of green seasoning, Trinidad green seasoning, which has scallions, has cilantro in there. We're literally gonna mix this together. Look at that's coming together very beautifully. I'm gonna add in a little bit of salt and a little bit of cracked black pepper to it. And then this will really be our dip, right? You can add a little bit more annatto powder to it to give it that extra reddish hue. This is a great way to kind of colorize your foods without adding any kind of chemicals or dyes, right? Just like that. That sort of mimics the ketchup that would be in there. Or you could use tomato sauce if you'd like. You could put a touch of tomato paste, but remember the Greek yogurt is already tangy, right? I'm gonna add just a little bit. Of, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Instead of the salt and pepper shaker, we're gonna use this guy. Have a little bit more control over my salt. Just a little tiny spoon here and a little bit of cracked black pepper to the top, just like that. I'm gonna mix that together and that dip you have to taste that and see if it's ready for prime time. Let's see here. I have a little tasting fork. I have many of these every single time. Let me try this dip. Mmm, wow. Hello, that's spicy and delicious. <laughs> I'm gonna eat the dip before the fritters, baby. Oh, that's good. And it has a kick. Mm. Everybody, I wish you were here. You could taste this with me. I don't know if you'll go back to your mayo ketchup after you taste this. Oh, so good. And the longer this sits, the more flavorful it's going to become. We're back everybody. Our conch salad has been chilling in the fridge. It looks perfect and ready. But while that is still marinating nicely, we're gonna make our drink like I promised you, right? It's so simple and so easy. At the very bottom of this shaker, you see it's a nice little thick viscous liquid on the very bottom. That is some date syrup. 
Remember how I love to use date sugar in my recipes? Well, now this is date syrup. Instead of honey, it adds more fiber, a little bit more nutrients to your body. That's literally right on the bottom. To that, you're literally gonna just simply add in a little bit of lime juice, just like that. And you can add some ice just to this. It's so simple and so easy, believe me. You want that extra slushiness, you can actually put some of the ice water straight into there as well. I'm gonna add in a little bit more ice. So simple, it's literally that's it. You don't need to add anything else to this drink, right? And the best part, of course, is the shake, 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 right? When we get to actually get a little exercise in our kitchen, I'm just gonna put a little bit of that ice water in there and pop on our lid. Make sure it's sealed nice and tight. And they give that a little shake. Look at that. Date syrup on the bottom, just during the party. <laughs> you see it's changing color on us, right? That is the date syrup, adding richness to it. Just shake it, use your muscle, everybody. Come on, just get in there. Put your Calypso music on. Get a party going and shake, shake, shake this away. It's cooling it down. It's flavoring it nicely. And look at that, look how rich that is. Oh, delicious. So what I'm going to do is, I think that's nice and shaken well. We're going to make a little bit of a lime garnish. Just take a nice little slice of lime. Nice little round slice, just like this. Cut a little bit of a nice little spot so we can make a little wedge right on here. And we are going to pour our delicious drink filtered right into this, just like so. It's matching our glass, right? Look how gorgeous that is. Ah, refreshing and amazing. That's all we need, everybody. You can add some more ice to this if you choose. Rest of the ice in here, so you don't have to feel left out joining that party, right? Just in here, just like that. It is ready for you to sip. Look at that. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. Oh my goodness. This is like a new version of limeade, okay? That date syrup took it to another level. You have to try this. As I promised you, our conch salad is ready. And look, these are close to my heart. My husband and I actually painted these. We have two of these at one of our date nights. And so I felt this would be perfect for the conch salad, right? So I'm gonna just put it down here with a slotted spoon like this so that I can have the liquid sort of stay in my bowl. I'm just gonna give this a nice toss. If you look at the conch in there, you notice that it is white. That means it's cooked by the acid. That's what we wanna see, right? Now, before I even plate this, you know I have to taste it, right? So let me just make sure it's exactly where I need it to be before we serve it to anybody else. Mmm. Oh my goodness, everybody. Wow. That is tasty. Mmm. I'm gonna probably have some of this every day until this bowl is done. <laughs> so we're gonna just plate it straight in here, just like that. Look how beautiful that is. You can serve this with plantain chips, cassava chips, your favorite whole grain tortilla chips, however you choose to eat that. I'm gonna pour a generous amount right in here, just like that. Make sure the acid gets in there too. Perfect timing, guys, our fritters. You hear that? They need to be checked. They were smelling our conch salad and they wanna join in. <laughs> so before I check on them, we're gonna finish plating this off with some beautiful plantain chips, tostón plantain chips. Look at these. I'm gonna put some just around the borders, just like so. Maybe just on one side and I'll turn it around and I'll show you what it looks like. Just like that, a little dimension to it. A little bit of crunch. And these really stand up to the liquid that's in there. Right, and I'm gonna add just a little bit of parsley right on the top. I can use my kitchen shears right here. 
just clip off a piece, pop it right in the middle. Are you ready for the big reveal? Look at that. How beautiful that is, right? Oh, okay, we're coming, we're coming. So let's get now to the oven. A nice little skewer just to see if it's cooked all the way in the middle first, okay? Let's do this together. Oh my goodness, do you see it from there? I don't know if you see it from there. They're poking out of the top. They have risen nicely. Okay, let's do this. Pull this forward a little bit. Let's see where we are. And I'm gonna test one. Came out clean, guys. It looks like it's ready to go. Now I can pop this right over here and then just take a look and see. Okay, everybody, we're about to plate these gorgeous conch fritters. So I have my bowl right here with the dip that we made. I'm gonna move it a little bit closer. These are fresh, hot, out of the oven. See if we can scoop them out just like this. Use a pair of tongs just to grab it and just put it literally all the way around. Use this, I have one gloved hand here. Flip these around a little bit over here, just like so. Oh my gosh, I don't know if you could, these are so light and airy. Oh my goodness. A little bit, spread it out a little bit so there's a little bit more even. I think that side needs some love over here. Oh my goodness, and we did it everybody. We can sprinkle a little bit of cilantro on the top. You know, I'm gonna actually use my kitchen shears over here. And just take out a little bit of the cilantro. You can cut up some of the cilantro just with the kitchen shears, just like this. And you can sprinkle a little bit over the top. Give it a little extra color, and a little extra flavor. Just like that. Just over the top. Just around it. Look at that. That's all we need, everybody. And we did it. We made a delicious bowl of baked conch fritters. It's not looking incredible. Are you ready to join me? Well, listen, everybody, I want to wish you, of course, good health and a long life. Join me again soon. Eating protein can make you feel full longer. It may provide many health benefits, including increasing your muscle mass and healthy bone mass. Protein from lean meats, plants, beans, and other healthy sources reduces your cravings and the desire to a late night snack, right? It will also boost your metabolism and help you burn fat. Enjoy eggs, nuts like almonds and peanuts, chicken breast, fish, beans, Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, shellfish, and more.